So we're here at the folded counterpoise that I recently erected. Uh, I did it according to specs by K2AV. And so it's uh, 33 feet on each side of this post. Three wires on your right, two wires on your left. And I've got them very tight. Uh, I've got a turnbuckle on one end pulling them tight. So I don't really have to have any spacers. I did put a few in though. And so there you go. Now I didn't have the correct transformer at the time that I put this up. So I borrowed my uh, DX Engineering 1 to 1. Uh, it's a current uh, ballon. Uh, it's rated for about 10,000 watts. And um, I've been running that on the air and I did notice an improvement. I think it's a much better antenna than my inverted L with just the uh, ground screen. Now for a ground screen, I had um, this fence wire laying along the ground underneath the uh, uh, antenna and it's 50 feet long. And then there's also another one going out in that direction that's growing over and several eight foot ground rods. So although that's supposed to be a pretty good ground, I found that the base impedance of the inverted L was only 35 ohms and it should have been much, much lower, which is an indication that we have some uh, ground loss. Now, this is my um, NFED halfway. We'll just ignore that for the time being. But uh, anyway, this over here is my uh, inverted L for 160. And I found that when I went from the ground screen to the Foley counterpoise that I had to increase the length greatly, like 25 to 30 feet in order to uh, make it resonant on the low end of 160. So here we are. I've got my uh, feline disconnected and I hooked up some RG58 temporarily to take a look at the impedance and um, the the low point on SWR shows 1.2 at R of 52 and at X of 9 and we're at 1840. I have to use this trap to keep out the local AM broadcast stations. One little problem is you can touch your hand to the ground you can see the meter move as I touch my finger to the ground. Now that's uh, an indication that we've got a bit of uh, interaction with the shield of the coax and the ballon isn't quite doing its job as far as decoupling it. And so what we're going to do is swap out the uh, ballon for this one that just came in today. This is the correct thing to use and it's the uh, Ballon Design FCP Isolation Transformer and it was designed by K2AV. So we're going to swap this out and see what effect that has on the resonant frequency and the shielding situation and so forth. Okay we've added the um, folded counterpoise Ballon Design uh, transformer took the DXE off and let's go over to our analyzer and see what we see here boot it up all right now we were at uh, 1840 something and now our SWR is up to 2.3 Let's go down. Okay, we're going down. And it's a little bit below 1.2 at 1810. So the extra inductance in the Ballon design, which by the way was designed by K2AV, um, does bring down the resonant frequency. Now we could bring it back up by trimming the antenna just a bit. 
Now let's check for ground influence when I touch the shield. Okay, that doesn't do anything. I think that shows we have better isolation now. And uh, just absolutely nothing happen happening at all there. So from my perspective at this point, I think it's working better. And we're seeing an R of um, 54 and an X of 6 ohms. 1.1 is the SWR on the digital readout. So, there we go. Now here's a diagram of the Foley counterpoise inverted L that I have. And um, first of all, down here is our ground. And, and like I showed you, I had some fence, <clears throat> fence wire laying on the ground, which is not necessary. It was just left over from a previous project. And I've got three supports. And the idea here is to support the bottom wire of the folded counterpoise eight feet off the ground. And then the other wires are four inches spaced. So you've got uh, eight feet, four inches, and then another four inches. You need a total of 66 feet minimum between the two ends, since it's 33 feet on each side. I would recommend having about 68 feet of total space. And the best way to do this would be to put an insulator on each end of each wire with a turnbuckle so that you can tighten them up good and tight. That way you'll need a minimum of spacers to keep them apart and or maybe none at all and it'll look neat, it won't sag, and it won't tangle up. So that's what I would, if I had it to do all over again, that's what I would do. What I've done is uh, attach these to the post uh, permanently, and then on this post over here, I've got a, a guy wire and a turnbuckle, and I can tighten that up and, and keep the tension on the wires. So um, this is the one with the uh, tree and there's just two attachments there. Um, the uh, transformer is here at the top of the post and you start at one end with your wire you go 66 feet up four inches 66 more feet up four inches and then back to the center another 33 feet. So your transformer has two terminals and you know it doesn't matter how you hook them up uh, so your antenna hooks up to the opposite terminal and goes vertical as far as you can possibly go and the more vertical the better for 160 meter dx your horizontal part can slope it can be level just however you can do it and i would recommend starting out at uh, a total length of uh, 150 feet and then chop it down from there. It's a lot easier to eliminate wire and chop it off than it is to add it. So um, I'm going to try to show you the uh, article, the original article written by K2AV. And I'm going to put a link down here to this article. It's kind of a long uh, URL. But in this article, it gives you all the, uh, the background. And um, it also gives you a schematic right here uh, of the transformer. As you can see here, this is your primary where your coax connects. On the bottom, there's a coax connector. And... Um, then the uh, transformer's secondary comes out and goes to the top of that wire that I showed you outside. And then on the top here of the transformer is your inverted L. And then included in here is instructions on how to homebrew this if you want to. And um, it's very detailed. It's really quite simple. Uh, it's just a T200 core uh, toroid 
with uh, a pair of wires wrapped around it. You just have to be careful not to get them connected wrong. But I was in a hurry, and uh, besides that, the price that Bow and Design charges is not too bad. By the time that you buy the ferrite core, the uh, the wire, the Teflon tubing, and the enclosure, and all the stainless steel hardware, uh, you'd be surprised how much uh, you have invested. So um, there you go. This was written in uh, 2012 and put in the uh, the uh, NCJ publication, National Contesting uh, Journal, I guess it is. Uh, okay, and then we got um, 160 here. Of course, this is in the middle of the afternoon. There's not going to be anybody on it. Um, I've got I've got one birdie that. Uh, from a local radio station right here. It's not too strong, but uh, it might go away if I use a line choke or uh, if I ground the uh, coax. I don't know. It's just different different arrangements cause it to show up, and that's because I've got a uh, fairly couple of fairly powerful AM broadcast stations nearby. Okay, so I'm gonna tap the key here, and let's see. That's a 100 watts output. Um, you can see your SWR is right here, and it's the flat one to one at 1840 kilohertz. I went ahead and chopped off um, about six feet uh, to get it uh, up to that frequency, and that's a good that's a good place to be for a combination of CW and and single sideband operation. Um, I can uh, tune around here, and uh, at the very bottom of the band, it goes up to 2.5, and then it goes up to 2.5 again, up at uh, about 1900. So you can see there, it's a nice, fairly sharp dip. It's indicating that we have uh, low loss, high Q, or whatever, and... Um, Again, it's resonating at 1840. So uh, tonight we're going to get on the air and uh, see how it does in comparison to how it was before we we got the Bowen design transformer. Um, also, here is a uh, here's a link to the uh, Bowen design website, uh, BowenDesigns.com. And if you look under, um, down here under Unique Transformers, Folded uh, Counterpoise, and that'll take you to uh, a page that'll give you a selection of either 160 or 80 meters. And uh, so there's the inside of the Counterpoise. Nice, neat work he does, $85. Um, it's the model 1142S 2KW, which I have yet to verify, but I don't, I've only got 500 watts and I don't expect it to be a problem. So there's a link to an article here, uh, or actually an email that went <clears throat> back and forth between uh, Bow and Design's owner and K2AV concerning the antenna length, and a lot of people had some problems with their antenna being too short and um, there isn't uh, I think the bottom line was there was no conclusion to exactly what the length should be because the length can uh, can be determined by the height of the antenna and where it's bent to go horizontal and the nature of the ground the proximity to foliage and other antennas and there's so many variables that uh, you really can't uh, can't give an exact answer. Uh, 234 divided by the frequency in megahertz is the standard uh, formula for finding the the length of a quarter wave antenna but uh, this does need to be a bit longer uh, 
and the inductance of this thing actually does influence the length too. So the best thing to do, like I said, is just cut it too long and then just uh, cut the end off until you get it where you want it. Okay, I hope this was helpful and uh, I hope you can try the folded counterpoise and get on 160 and join us. 73. So let's take a tour of the folded counterpoise and the antenna. Here's where it starts on this tree. A couple of screw-in insulators, which I will leave there. Uh, this end has two wires and they are shorted together, as you can see. And then these two wires, they go over to the uh, the main post in the middle. Very sunny out here today. And you can see here where I've got my uh, three wire other side coming in. And the, uh, the top wire ends on top of the post there and that's what goes to the folded counterpoise transformer. And uh, going down the line, down here is the other post, and uh, as you can see, we have three insulators screwed in: one on the top, two on the on the side. The reason for that was because the post is a 10-foot post, and I was just a little bit too short to use all three of them on the side because I wanted to be sure it was uh, to spec which is eight feet from ground level so back over there you can see the see the transformer right there and this other wire that's my uh, that's my in fed half wave 80 through 10 and then going up at an angle here that's the inverted L, and it goes up um, to about 51 feet up in this tree. And uh, let's see if I can show you here. It's, like I said, a little sunny. But uh, it ends down there at that other tree, and the top is somewhere around 90 uh, feet, I would estimate I did so much trimming that I lost track of the actual length but uh, according to KTA, uh, K2AV the total length is going to be a bit longer than a normal uh, inverted L which is fed against ground and so 140 to 155 feet is to be expected so there we go. Tonight we'll give it a check and see how she operates.